Another beautiful day in the English countryside. But again, the truth versus the lie. Truth versus monster lie is always the case. Light versus darkness. And it's beautiful out here. Again, very still night. Be still and know that I am God. That's what the scripture says. It is good sometimes just to be still. Jesus often withdrew to the mountains. The Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua. To be alone with his heavenly Father. Sometimes we just need to come and have that walk in the cool of the day. Have a nice chat with our heavenly Father about everything and anything through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yosha. Whatever we need, scripture again is clear. Ask and you shall receive. Ask, believe and you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. You have not asked your heavenly father. You need grace, peace, wisdom, strength, understanding. To be empowered from on high. To be transformed from the darkness to the light we need discernment to know what is true and what is real and what is fact and what is a monster lie so one big priceless gift of salvation God's infinite power and wisdom And the Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua, does warn us. Prepare now, spiritually and practically, while you have the light, the time and the opportunity, the window of opportunity. Because darkness, night, evil comes when no man can work. The storm clouds are gathering. It'll be too late to prepare then. A lot of people will just sit and wait until that happens and then it'll be too late they don't prepare so you won't choose to be in the right place at the right time instead of trapped in the wrong place at the wrong time so we all know we all need wisdom from above Again, God's only begotten Son. In Scripture it says, Whoever believes on God's only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua, shall be saved. Whosoever, that's anyone, even the simple, unlearned, foolish people like me, the nobodies like me, whosoever shall believe shall be saved and i know god is good for his promises and good for his word his eternal word so once i was blind now i can see once i was lost but now i am found and that was interesting i was in spain i did go to a got invited to a church service I was witnessed to by Raymond and Maria, a couple of Christians on the street, Tara Molinas, to invite me to a church service. And I had gone to Tara Molinas, and interestingly, I was going to go to Yugoslavia. But that was a four day coach trip to get to Yugoslavia. And I always fancied, especially southern Yugoslavia, a bit like the Wild West. But I went into the travel agent. <clears throat> And the girl who served me, you know, we talked about where a good location to go for a good holiday. She said, you should go to Spain, go to Tara Molinas. And uh, she said, it's really lovely down there. So she talked me into going to Tara Molinas. And then I found myself being witnessed to by a couple of Christian witnesses, Raymond and Maria. And Raymond said something that kind of struck with me. He said, you can go to hell on a bicycle or you can go to hell driving a Jaguar and that kind of 
that hooked me a bit, so I did go. And there was a Gordon Pringle from Lockerbie, obviously where they had the big disaster in Lockerbie, the plane. The unexpected when you least expect it. Came down all around Lockerbie in the past. And Gordon Pringle, a real rough diamond from Scotland, he was preaching. And I was sitting at the back, just taking it all in. But when he kept saying, you need Jesus, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. And that really struck with me. And I had a good chat with him after the meeting. And I went back to this hotel room. I had a cheap hotel. Didn't even have a window. I did have a kind of skylight thing in it. And I did pray. I said, you know, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, if you are real, if you are the real McCoy, because I have been up so many garden paths. And I had took a book on Zen Buddhism with me. I was going to read while I was just holidaying. I said, Lord Jesus Christ, if you are the real McCoy, then I want to know. If you, but somehow you're going to have to show me, because I have been up so many garden paths, and I had been involved, you know, had some quite powerful encounters in the occult. So much so, so much so, that I was even paid off a ship in Pakistan, because I freaked the whole crew out. So I got into what they call man, where you have a mantra. And my mantra was Rama, and you were just meant to repeat the mantra Rama and go into a higher level of consciousness or whatever. And you know, I was quite intrigued by Eastern mysticism and all that, and symbolism and all that. So I drew some symbolism on my carpet in my cabin, done my mantra Rama. And we were in Karachi, Pakistan. It was baking hot and we had no air conditioning on the ship. And my cabin became cold. And there was a, not a very good presence. Like a real, quite an evil presence. Something not very good. And that freaked the whole crew out. So they paid me off the ship in Pakistan. And the other intriguing thing I saw... <clears throat> So I got on a plane, obviously, to fly back to the UK. And when the plane was taken off at full throttle, you know, when it gets into that full thrust and starts going up in the air, you know, it was quite, I looked out the window and there was a black bird, like an osprey, a bit bigger than an osprey, but a black bird. And that was flying level with the plane, but that was flying in slow motion. Obviously, it's just seeing something in the, spiritual realm so I thought well this is really strange but you know I was just searching looking for answers because I knew there was something there and I just couldn't find it just couldn't and before I could go back to see what well, was quite amusing <clears throat> I had to go and see a merchant navy quack before they had let me go back to see because of what had happened in Pakistan and they saw me like a bit of a Jonah throw him overboard but the <coughs> psychiatrist, the, the merchant navy quack I had to see, he was Indian. And he knew exactly where I was coming from. You know, and I had tapped into something, but it was something that was not very good. So here I am in Spain. I said, you know, Jesus, if you are the real McCoy, I will, you know, I'll follow you. But somehow you're going to have to show me because I've been up so many garden paths and I went to sleep and then I was caught up to heaven in the spirit and here I am sitting in a green palace room and I have been to the winter summer palace in Russia and it was a lovely you know lovely color green palace room no one else was in the room and I never felt so empowered, never, never felt such a fullness, never felt so much love flowing over me and around me and like a fountain within, just welling up. And I weren't in this world, I knew I wasn't in this realm. You know, I knew I'd been caught up into heaven and I stayed there you know, for a few moments, just soaking all that up, that experience, and that is what changed me and changed my life and then I almost 
And then I felt myself almost being lowered back to this realm. And I even looked down on my body in the hotel room. So that was most strange. And then when I woke up, <clears throat> and I woke up straight away when I returned to my body in the hotel room and I looked up and I only had a skylight and I said, Jesus, now I understand that you are the one. You are the real McCoy. And I went to Spain for a two-week holiday and stayed there for two years. And I did read a scripture and that knew God was telling me to stay there where the Lord Jesus Christ says, whoever finds his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my name and for my sake will find it. So I stayed in Spain. I stayed there for two years. And then ironically, at the time I was working on the coast, Tain St. the Nordic Herald of Free Enterprise and the Spirit of Free Enterprise, Tain St. big roll-on, roll-off ferries. And then the ship that I should have been working on when I returned to the UK, the Herald of Free Enterprise, was suddenly all on the front pages of the Sunday Times, sorry, the newspapers in Spain, and they'd left the bay door open outside a sea bridge, put to sea with the bay door still open, and all the water had flooded into the car and lorry decks, and the ship had capsized off side, outside of sea bridge. And a lot of my friends and people that I worked with, you know, lost their lives. So that was a bit of divine intervention. And there I was sitting in Spain. So a strange sequence of events. And again we can choose heaven or hell, we can choose life or death, we can choose eternal freedom or eternal entrapment and enslavement, we have the free choice. And there is only one name given under heaven among Men by whom we may be saved, the Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua. There is no other name given under heaven among men by whom we can be saved. Buddha cannot save you. Muhammad cannot save you. Krishna cannot save you. But the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, the one that God sent to set and make the captives free, you and me, we certainly can be saved by God's grace and spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ, Yoshua, his ultimate sacrifice. So we can be ransomed, healed, transformed and delivered, set free, made whole again. And that was the other thing that's really stuck with me is Jesus spoke to this man at this pool and asked him a question. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be made whole? And at that particular time in my life, you know, I was stuck in the bottom of the well. I just could not get out of it. Obviously being involved in the occult and drink and drugs and everything else, but I was in the well. I couldn't get out of it. No matter how hard I tried to climb the walls, how high I climbed, you just fell back down the bottom again. I could not get out of that dark well. I was trapped in it. And my life was very frag fragmented. <clears throat> you know, very... I'm trying to find the word I'm looking for. But, you know, I really did want to be made whole again. I was far from whole. And then after that very powerful encounter with the living God, you know, that started my road back to wholeness for the pieces to start to be put back together again, you know, with the love and tender care of the Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua, and Yahweh, our eternal Heavenly Father. So, certainly it's good to be made whole again, again, to be transformed and empowered from on high.
Again, I'm just a simple man. I love the simple things of life. And I say, this doesn't cost you nothing. It's beautiful out here. Can I put a price on freedom? Freedom of speech and expression. Freedom of choice. Freedom to roam. Freedom to travel. There's only no black panther, serial killer here, Africa, dear Snorge and Sandrine. One big monster lie in this Norfolk, UK, that some people want everyone to believe is true, but never the case, 39 on all accounts. Again with King David, there's a bit of a David Goliath story. You know, God prepares this man. First, he prepared King David with the bear, then the lion, and then Goliath. And again with Samson, he was a bit of a wild card. God moved him across the chess board, right into the temple of the Philistines, where he pushed the pillars and brought the whole rotten, corrupt, deceased temple down on their heads. So, God certainly does have a plan for each and every one of our lives. And again, we follow the Lord Jesus Christ through the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever loses his life, you know, will find it. You will find your life, the true, the real you, who God intended you to be. Your true God-given sovereign identity, your God-given rights and freedoms, where again, you are sovereign, you are chief executive, you are sole beneficiary, and they are the public servants. And it's a bit like that in the film The Matrix, when Neo goes to the oracle and she says to him, know thyself, it's very important if you know thyself, if you know the truth. You know the truth about yourself, you know the truth about why you're here, you know the truth about what is really going on and I certainly don't have all the insights understandings and that's why it's good to join with other like-minded people we all have pieces of the puzzle and when we put them together we see the bigger picture but God will lead us into all truth by his grace and spirit certainly give us the understanding the insights and the revelation And today is the day and now is the time. So all we have is here and now. Tomorrow may never come or be too late. So I am eternally grateful that the Lord Jesus, I didn't find the Lord Jesus Christ, he found me. I was looking in all the wrong places for the answers that I was looking for. They weren't to be found in those places. Just led to exas exas sorry, exasperation. So I am a very simple and learned man. I took have a very big of the English language. But one of the books I did read early on. Richard Wormbrand in solitary confinement with Christ and we kept it together done three and a half years in solitary confinement 13 and a half years in a work labor camp in Romania which was little Russian at the time and three and a half years in solitary confinement he, and the book is about as I say how he kept himself together and he did they only brought him out of sorry confinement to beat him and torture him. He did become so weak that all he was conscious of was his heart beating. That's all he was. And he said, you know, Heavenly Father, all I'm conscious of is my heart beat and I give it to you. And he had such a powerful encounter with the living God. And he saw the worst forms of atrocities Let's make a very profound statement. You know, there's no level of depri deprivation that men will not sink to who are without God. So that was a very inspirational book. 
I survived 13 and a half years in a work labour camp. Three and a half years in solitary confinement. And the other book that really inspired me was Sindar Singh, The Saffron Robe. And he was exasperated with his faith, Hinduism. And he was going to throw himself under the 520 train. And there was a train line over there. And the Lord Jesus Christ, Joshua, appeared to him. And stopped him throwing himself under the train. And then sent him into Tibet. And the saffron robe is all about his journey through the foothills of northern India and up through the Himalayas and he meets different mystics and holy men and so forth and God sent him to the forbidden city in Tibet to speak to the Dalai Lama so that's a very interesting story and when Sindar Singh came to this country again the saffron robe that was during the industrial revolution and he just said these people are just so busy and now our lives are so busy and so full of distractions. And he just said, you know, where do these people find time to feed their spirits? Because you know, to look after the spiritual side of yourself as well as the natural side of yourself. We do live in a natural and supernatural world, but Sindar Singh was akin to being out in the wilds and in the mountains and meditating and soaking up, feeding his spirit. And when he just came to the UK, such a fast pace of life during the Industrial Revolution. And the pace of life is even faster today. So it's very important. Come out into the peace and quiet and feed your spirit. Be in God's creation. We certainly are created to have fellowship with the Creator, our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And again I look to the hills from where, do, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So I say I am but a breath, but a shadow, but transformed by the infinite power, grace and spirit of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, Yoshua, made whole again. That's the word I was looking for earlier when I was thinking about my life being fragmented. Coherent, that's the word I was looking for. And my life was very fragmented and certainly wasn't coherent. Certainly out of focus, but I certainly come into a lot better focus now and a lot better place. And I do know the peace and strength of God. And again, not by strength nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So how much is your life, how much is your priceless eternal soul worth? You know, do not lose it. Eternal freedom or eternal entrapment and enslavement. Heaven or hell, but it's our free choice. As they say, choose wisely. Anyhow, God bless, take care.